context, you might want to correlate the, the two. And so you're trying to understand, does a sense of belonging, for example, and autonomy, do those have a, a, an effect on depression levels, okay? And so you can take your sense of belonging questions and create a composite score. So a, a, like a sum, for instance, of, of the ratings for each question. And then you want one variable that's a sum of those. And so let me just uh, go ahead and do that. And hopefully then it will be clearer, but you want uh, some sense. And you can't have spaces when you're naming your new variables. Uh, you'll notice even here with the variable names, there are no spaces in between. If you need a space, you'll need an underscore. So you wanna create a new variable called sense of belonging and let that be the sum. And so I clicked all up, the, up there and I clicked sum right here. And I'll, I'll actually double click that, yes. And now where it has question marks, that's where they want you to include the variables that you wanna add up to, for your for your composite variable. And so I remember it was from here. So double click that comma, double click the next one comma, double click the next comma, comma, comma. And we're separating them, oopsie, did it twice. Okay, now my mother and father control everything. Those are the autonomy questions. So we want that. And then we just want to check, do I have commas in between each variable or not? So I'll just make sure I do. And it was A, 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 A. Here, I'm missing one. Okay, good. And now I'll paste it yet again and it will come into my syntax and I will run that and I look at my output to see if there's any errors. Nope, it executed. And indeed, when I look at my variable list, I now have a new one at the end here. It usually appends it to the end of your variable list. And I can see that it's a scale variable, which is true. Um, I added up those scores. So if somebody rated a five, for this, I feel like I belong at the school and a five, I feel safe and all of that. They, they will have a maximum score of five times, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five times six, so 30, uh, if, if they had a five on all of them. But that's what this has done. And now if I look in my data view, indeed again, I see the new variable and I see their numbers and, and they go to a certain range. Now, here you're one step closer to answering your question of the sense of belonging affect depression levels to some, some degree, but you still have depression questions being separate things. And so it, it's, it's not quite ready yet to, to make those kinds of uh, analysis. And so you wanna do possibly something similar with depression and have a composite score for depression levels as well. And so you want to say the sum depression and you want that to equal uh, the depression ones. So little interest, comma, feeling down, comma, trouble falling asleep, feeling tired, poor appetite, and the rest is sense of belonging. So after the last one, there's no comma. And I see I left a comma out somewhere, did I? No, it looks good. So I'll paste that, go to my syntax and just run that, done. Now I have a composite for depression, composite for a sense of belonging. Good, now I can do something about that, okay? Now, before you, you can either do a correlation between the two because now you have two scale variables and we run correlations on scale variables, not on categorical variables. So I can go here and say, uh, let's correlate, and it's bivariate co correlation. There are two variables that I wanna uh, correlate here. Oh, and let's just, so here it's calling it a nominal. I'll change that to scale. Sometimes when you create a composite variable, a thesis doesn't quite pick it up as being what it is. And so you wanna just double check, make sure 
um, it's properly labeled there. I'll take the two and I want Pearson co 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 coefficients there and I want uh, tests of significance and I'll paste that. And I'll go to my syntax file, select that and press play. Wow, okay, so it's telling me that the Pearson correlation is 0 0.703. Now you might recall that correlations run from negative one to positive one, where negative one is a strong negative correlation. And when you have a negative correlation, it means that things are moving in opposite directions. Directions. When one moves up, the other variable is moving down. And so in this case, um, if it were negative correlation, so there'd be a negative sign here and it would be negative, say negative 0.703, that would mean, hey, if you have a stronger sense of belonging, you tend to have lower levels of depression. Or if you have higher levels of depression, you tend to have lower uh, sense of belonging. So correlations don't quite tell us the direction of influence. That's a, a thing for regression analysis and all of that. But it just tells us how are these two related to each other. And when it's positively related, it means they go up or down together. So if sense of belonging is up, depression levels tend to be up. And here it's telling us that, yeah, there's a positive correlation. And when uh, the sense of belonging is up, depression goes up. Again, remember it's because this is totally made up data. Um, so don't, don't put any stock on that. And uh, it also tells us the strength of the relationship. Uh, point, five, point 0.5 and above is a strong relationship, a, a strong relationship. And so uh, here, point 0.7, that's a pretty strong positive relationship. If, if it was negative point 0.7 or 3, that would be a pretty strong uh, negative correlation between the two variables. And we, it's also statistically significant, as you can see here, at the 0.01 level. So this is very interesting. So this is something that you can report in your paper or, or presentation, and you can look at other videos and papers to see how to uh, present that in, in a paper, but that's something you can do. Now, another thing that you could have done was to create groups. You could say, hey, I wanna have a, a group that's, you know, um, highly depressed and another that's uh, not uh, that has low depression levels and I want to create kind of those two groups and so to do that you'd want to uh, have some descriptive statistics first because you want to see well uh, how what are the ranges here what am I talking about in terms of range and I'll show you in a minute what I mean I'll select that and press play and now when I go to output, I see there's a minimum score of two and a maximum of 25. You remember that the maximum would, uh, possible one would have been 30 if you had five, 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 five for uh, depression levels because we had uh, one, two, three, four, five questions uh, to do with depression and they were on all on a five point scale. And so if you gave a five on each, you could, would have had, uh, you know, you would have had 30. And if you had low on each, very low you, frequency, you would have had uh, uh, five because that would be one times five, okay? But we run descriptives because clearly, the maximum isn't 30 because nobody was super duper depressed and the minimum wasn't one. Nobody was like absolutely clear of depression, right? And, and so now that we know our range, you can say take, you can take as a midpoint and say something like, well, if the depression score is two to, I don't know, 15, call that the low depression group. And if it's 16 and above, call that the high depression group. Now, the, ideally, sometimes there's literature for these definitions. And so for depression, there's actually scales for depression and there's a bands for de depression where they tell you, oh, if it's, they score zero to five, it's mild depression, six to 10, it's moderate, etc. But it, you can also uh, make it up in a way and create some bands just to help in, interpret the data. And if you choose to do that, you then go to transform 
And this time, you'd say um, recode into different variables. And you'll say you want to have this depression one be a new variable called depression groups. And I'll just give it the same label. Doesn't matter. And I'll click change. And I'll say all the new va values. Now, say let that be a range, okay? Let that be a range where uh, from the lowest number available in the data set to 15, let that be a one. And I'll later call that the low depression group and I'll add. And then let's say from um, 16 onwards, so range of value through the highest in the, in the data set, let that be two, let that be a second category. So I'm essentially telling it, there's this uh, variable that's a scale variable called depression, uh, some depression. And I wanted to make it into a categorical variable where there are two groups. One has uh, scores from 0 to 15, or, or rather 2 to 15, and the highest, and then the second group has 16 to the highest, okay? And I'll just say system missing to system missing. I, I know there's no missing data here, but I, I like to keep things consistent. And I will just highlight that, press play. And yep, it's done that. Now it's created a, a nominal variable called depression groups. And indeed, if I go to my data set and I go to the end, I see, aha, uh -huh, it's assigned everybody into a group one or two. And I just want to label those groups while I still remember what I'm doing. One is low depression group. Oopsie. Add. And two is high depression group. And I'll say, okay. Great. And I can do the same for a uh, sense of belonging. I can have a, a group with high sense of belonging and a group with low sense of belonging. Or I can just leave sense of belonging as such, and I could uh, just have the, the uh, groups for depression groups. And if I choose to then compare this nominal variable and the scale variable, I'd go to analyze, and then I'd go to explore, and I'll say, that I want you to br break this de de uh, dependent variable, that's a scale variable, uh, and show me the analysis by these two groups where uh, the groups are uh, one and two, okay? And so I want the uh -huh, what sense of belonging, okay, okay? So in essence, what I'm saying here is I believe that your sense of belonging, the dependent uh, variable, is determined by what group you fall in, which doesn't quite make sense. Again, it's because the data is, is made up. But if, if you had real data, you'd kind of put your um, whatever you think the outcome depends on in the factor list. And then uh, let me see what statistics I want. Descriptives, indeed. Plots. Let's do uh, histogram, sure. And then that, let's just take that for now. I don't want to exclude any cases. Okay. And I want, um, sure, both. Let's paste that and let's run it. Okay, so it's telling us that the mean sense of belonging for the low depression group, the average, the average sense of belonging is 14.8 versus the high depression group where the sense of belonging is an, on average 23, um, 23. And those numbers mean absolutely nothing. Uh, a sense of belonging of 14, if you say that to somebody, they're like, okay, sure, that's great. But it means something in comparison to the two, right? It's clear that the high depression group has a higher uh, average sense of belonging than the low depression group. Um, again, it, it would probably not be the case if this were true data. And it will also give you a plot that you can copy and, and you know, include in a paper.